executive producer Jeff is not here today, everyone. Correct. He's gone. Um, so you know what that means. We're going to rummage through his office. Let's see if he left anything. Oh, look, a to-do list. It says drain pool, fire Eric, and fire Jason. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> look at that. Why is this pool <laughs> open in March? <laughs> Better roll the open quick. Here we go. Have a seat. Save your energy. We have an hour. I said if I was going to do TV, because I was never not going to be myself. You're sitting next to one on the couch. So let's just say that. Be yourself, but not too much of yourself. Now, here's Jason. Hello. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Stop, stop, stop. Thank you, everybody. Welcome to the Jason Show. I hope you're doing well. I'm Jace. Let us start with this. What could be a bold new flavor or a lame April Fool's prank. 7-Eleven says they're introducing a new hot dog sparkling water. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Row one feels strongly about this. Uh, <laughs> the big bite hot dog water is meant to taste like the popular snack. Ketchup and mustard is included with the water. It's supposedly a part of a new line of sparkling waters with other normal flavors like lemon lime, green apple, and sweet orange. And it's expected to hit store shelves, and I'll give you a one guess of what day, April Fool's Day. That's right, <laughs> that's right. Now, if the studio audience doesn't behave today, they're gonna be forced to drink that before they leave. <laughs> Let's get started, everybody. Roll. Okay. Okay. Uh, here's the, we said this, uh, my buddy Colleen said this on the radio show. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the marketing people, thank you for trying. Yes. But, uh, I mean, you kind of gave it away. Right. I mean, if you're, uh, no one's thinking this is real when you're launching the product on Monday, April, April 1st. <laughs> okay. You know, try a little harder next time. There is a real a local beer brewery that is doing a pizza beer. Like they had a very limited edition pizza beer run where your beer tastes like a pizza. So you don't have to get both, you just have the one. Yeah. It sold for quite a bit of money too. I don't know what it tasted like, sounds disgusting. But I, I hate April Fool's Day. I really oh. do, I do, I hate it. I do. Sorry. I hate, and I don't like to use the word, I don't like to use the word hate, uh, but I, I hate internet trolls and I hate April Fool's Day. I mean, those are the, in that order, yeah. I hate. aggressive take. I, it's just. However, I, you know, when we, um, before the show uh, went to stations across the country, mm -hmm. I always thought it would be fun, and we never could work this out. There's a local show here uh, in the Twin Cities called Twin Cities Live. Yes. And I'm buddies uh, with some people that work over there. I always thought it would be a hoot if those people hosted this show and then I hosted Twin Cities Live mm -hmm. and we didn't say anything. Like I just, you know, when they, when the announcer right here just said, and here's Jason, here comes ben Elizabeth Lieber. and Ben <laughs> Lieber, you know what I mean? And then vice versa, but it would, we Wait, couldn't, what? we couldn't convince the bosses that was a good no. idea, but no. no I, we couldn't but, all agree on something. Do you like April, do you like pranks and April Fools? I mean, why not? It's one day of the year, you just kinda gotta watch your back. You know what I mean? You gotta be like, what is that? Oh, it's no. like nothing. No. You know, just give the whole day. Nope. Nope. It's good for your adrenaline. 
I don't need that. I don't need that. No. Let's, let's get started, everybody. It's time for the hotness. Roll it, Leo. Let's do this. <laughs> Getting too old, Kendall. Gonna Getting too attack? old. I can't have those kind of scares anymore. Oh, anyway, no. let's start up. First up, if you open up uh, right now, and don't do it, you're watching our show, but if you open up your Disney Plus app, you might notice a little, uh, little change here. The Hulu Disney Plus bundle has officially launched as one standalone service. I know it gets, this is why I'm doing this story because I barely understand it and I wanna help you understand it. So subscribers in the good US of A who have an active subscription can now watch shows and movies from both libraries. So from the Hulu library and the Disney Plus the library all on the Disney Plus app. This, yeah. Right? Yeah, it's supposed to help us. But anyway, the move is aimed at driving up total at, at total viewing hours and get more eyeballs on content people may not have heard of before. You know, if you have like Disney, but you don't have uh, uh, Hulu, you know what I mean. Higher engagement with a streaming service means lower cancellation rates. That's what the, re the big wigs tell us. Yeah. So... The duo plan, Hulu and Disney Plus, cost $2 more than each individual subscription alone. So it's a kind of, I have it, I did the beta test, I've been, I've had Hulu on D uh, Disney Plus for a while, it's really nice. Because okay. I like the interface of Disney Plus more than, than the interface of Hulu. Mm -hmm. I hate the Hulu interface. See, I used hate again. Hey, I, I strongly <laughs> I strongly dislike I loathe it entirely. The Hulu interface. <laughs> okay. Disney Plus is real easy. It's mm -hmm. like everything's just yeah, there for out. me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't understand. So I have Disney Plus. Okay. I don't know how. Why do I, I feel like a Verizon worker right okay, now? Yeah. yeah. You, go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, Mr. Matheson. Yeah. So I don't even know how I have Disney Plus, but I have Disney Plus. I somehow have a free Disney Plus account. Don't tell them. Stop. You okay. probably have it. No, and I'm trying to help yeah. you step by step. I don't step. have ads. So. You probably have it from a Verizon. Oh, I do have Verizon. Then you have it for free your first year. You yeah. really are like your a Your first year, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Uh, please, ma'am, continue. How I've else can it, I help you? I've had it for like four years, so don't tell them. I won't tell Bob Iger. Okay. Continue. Yeah. Okay. So I have Hulu, but I have ads on Hulu. So if I just like open Disney Plus one day, am I just going to have Hulu on it too? With no ads? Yeah. Possibly. <laughs> But I, maybe, but again, don't yeah. tell Bob Iger or Mickey Mouse. Okay. I think just, just keep it quiet. One yeah. for the home team, it is, everybody. Yeah, keep it quiet. No, I think the same tier that you have individually is the tier that you'll have in the combo, yeah. Oh, that's so It's great. nice, though. It's really, really nice. Next in the dish, it's almost time to dust off your cowboy hats and boots. We're hours away, hours from the release of Beyonce's new country album called Cowboy Carter. On Wednesday, uh, Beyonce dropped the track list. Here it is. I saw this all over. My, all over my social media yesterday. She dropped it on Instagram in the style of a vintage concert poster with 27 titles. Now, even us, we, BB, we're trying to figure this out. It's a bit confusing, and the Beehive is trying to crack the Da Vinci Code here, but <laughs> there's a mention, there's a mention of Dolly P and tracks called Bodyguard and Jolene. One song appears to be called The Linda Martell Show, referring to the first black woman to play the Grand Ole Opry. Also, fans are uh, guessing that Beyonce is covering Blackbird by the Beatles. Oh. So all, re look, all will be revealed on Friday. So that's the day. Dolly P is, who else is it? It's Dolly Parton. I don't know a lot of Dolly. You know, it's not Dolly Patagonia or, right. you know what I mean? It's Dolly, it's like, yeah, it's Dolly P. That's, it's Dolly Parton. That's what her friends call her, yeah. Dolly, Dolly, Dolly P. P. Hey, Dolly P. Yeah. Um, there's also a Willie Nelson song. It's called, uh, is it Smoke, Smoke Hour? Yeah, Smoke Hour is Willie Nelson, which like, it's Willie Nelson, so you can ching ching chong, guess yeah. what that means. Um, but I've, I'm so excited about this. You, what? Let me, can I, Leo, take camera five. <laughs> Hi. You heard in the cold open, our big boss, executive producer Jeff, is gone for three days. So yes. if this show is 20 to 30% more offensive, that's why. Thank you. Back to you. Uh, there he's, we go. Not, yeah. he's not yeah. staring because at us. Because he's not. Terrifying. Because he's not, he's not. He's not over there on the podium going like this. Leo, take camera five again. 
That's what he does when we say something he doesn't like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just cut it off, yeah, cut it like off that. right there. There's BB. Okay, now, can we get BB a stool for heaven's sake? Now, what the hell is that? We're a big show now. We can't get him a stool. And BB's a big boy. Victoria? Are you? <laughs> now readjust the camera. The guy is. Now look at Victoria. Bless her heart. She, uh, Eric, get a shot of Victoria trying to fix this. <laughs> no, BB is. Uh, 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 my goodness. BB is fun size. Now, thank you, Victoria. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. <laughs> Heavens to Murgatroy. <laughs> I love my job. We'll be right back. Back in a moment, everybody. Back in a moment. <laughs> Casino for sponsoring that. They get up to twenty dollars of free play at Grand Casino. Oh, audience, we're in trouble. Because um, you just ran into the wall. Well, I ran into the wall in the yeah. commercial break, and then I just received a text message uh, from Jeff. Yeah. Why did you text Papa? Uh, I didn't. Te I didn't text Papa. I just. I. Uh, uh, he goes. He goes. I'm watching from Arizona, no. and I heard that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah. Oh, by the way, let's check uh, the Jeff cam. Is it fixed for BB's height? Yay! There we go. There, I love it. Thank you, Victoria. I love it. Jeff's been gone about 10 hours, and BB's moving in. I love it. That's right. The BB takeover. Let's continue. Uh, we all probably have that friend who isn't the best to travel with. <laughs> It's not Jeff for me. I Jeff, Jeff and I it's travel really well together. Well, it seems like Jerry Seinfeld is that type of person. He talked to Jimmy Fallon on Wednesday night about, about how much he hates family vacations and specifically jet skis. Watch. <laughs> Like complaining. I love about. complaining. My entire act is me complaining. I try and make it entertaining, but that's that's all it is—is is me complaining. <laughs> what, but what exactly things don't you like about? Don't Name you? something. On a uh, 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 the, the jet ski. Okay. Woo! <laughs> don't you hate when people do that? Yeah. Woo! The jet ski, you don't go anywhere on it. What, what is it? It is an amazing jet propulsion yeah. device to go nowhere. You go nowhere. <laughs> Wherever you get on a jet ski, that's your final destination. <laughs> that's where you're going. 25 minutes later, <laughs> thousands of miles. You've been travel. You go there. And you end up there. That's where you go. I mean, Jerry's not wrong, but I love a jet ski. I love jet skis. I do. I just kept thinking of Jeff while this was playing, just because he's watching. Oh. Jeff would also be like, "What do you like about jet skis?" Woo! You he don't would. go anywhere. He is. Uh, he is Seinfeld. Yeah. Also, <laughs> Jerry's upcoming film called Unfrosted delves into the origins of the Pop Tart. I'm not joking. It follows serial rivals Kellogg's and Post in a race to create the pastry. The cast: uh, Jim Gaffigan, Amy Schumer, Melissa McCarthy, and wait for it. Hugh Grant as Tony the Tiger. Here's what, here's what Jerry had to say about that. Hugh Grant. Hugh Grant. So Hugh Grant. Yeah. <laughs> so how, how did you get Hugh Grant to do this? He's very unhappy. Yeah. Because the character is Thurl Ravenscroft, which is the real name of the guy who did the voice of Tony the Tiger. Thurl Ravenscroft. Great name. And so I imagine this guy as a frustrated Shakespearean actor who has to play this embarrassing character <laughs> to make his car payments. Yeah. And that's, and Hugh Grant is perfect for that. He has to say, they're great. Yeah, they're great. Yeah. They're great. I bet that movie's gonna be great too. So, Unfrosted is what it's called, friends, and it comes out on Netflix in May. Look, laugh at it if you, we've been laughing at it. 
I bet you it's actually going to be really good. Well, now that we see what it is, at first it was just like Hugh Grant is Tony the Tiger. Like, so is this an what is animated that? movie? <laughs> what are you talking about? This does seem hilarious. It's great. And if you read the backstory, there really was, forget the space race of the 60s and 70s. It was a race to create the Pop-Tart between these rival companies. Delicious. Next in the dish, it's been a turbulent few weeks, and that's an understatement for the royal family, with Princess Kate revealing her cancer diagnosis. Joining us now uh, with more is the host of the Hollywood Raw podcast audience. Please clap for Dax Holt. There we go. <laughs> hello, hello, Jason. Hello, he, audience. How is everyone? He demands everyone clap for him when he walks into a room. That's right, yeah. <laughs> who, uh, buddy, who was your guest this week? Uh, yeah, we had a uh, one of my good friends, uh, Kinsey Schofield, on, who is a royal expert. Um, just because... There has been so much talk coming out of the palace. Everyone is fascinated with uh, all the stories going on right now. She is way smarter than me when it comes to all things royal, so we brought her on just to pick her brain for a little bit, see her thoughts on everything, um, and then we just kind of chatted, chatted about uh, Kate, her, her cancer diagnosis, talked about whether or not this is going to bring... Uh, Harry and Meghan close to his brother again. Like, we got into all of it, and whether or not a lot of these people, these big celebrities that were making jokes on where is Kate, whether or not they should be apologizing or going, give them some grace because they had no idea there was bigger issues going on other than just someone being out of the spotlight for a while. Yeah, you can't police that kind of thing. I mean, people are gonna, because it was, I mean, Kate's died, I said this, and I think you'd agree, Dax, Kate's diagnosis separate, it was insanity. The fact that the, not forget Kate, but the communications team, the fact that they just didn't uh, put out something to relieve all of these rumors, which, which would in turn de-stress the princess, is just wrong. It's just wrong. Yeah, I, I do agree on that. I think, you know, and that was one of the other debates that Kinsey and I got into is like, where is the line? Like, they are a very public family, and I, I don't want to say public in regards to they air out all of their information, but they are in front of, you know, they are the face of a, a country, basically. And so is there that transparency that there needs to be more transparency or they don't owe that to anyone? I, that That's, uh, we got into a big debate on, on the podcast about that issue alone. Hey, Dax, before you go, I want to invite myself onto your podcast. The next time you do, now here's, no, I'm going to pitch an idea for you. I want you, <laughs> All right, now, now, let's go. Because this is the only the specialty I have, Dax, because I never, uh, you're on my show every week, but audience, and you don't have to boo him yet. He's never invited <laughs> me on his podcast. He's never, I've never been on his podcast. No, yeah. No, no, audience, it's all right. It's all right. It's fine. Don't worry about me. But Dax, here, what I want you to do, I want you to do a special on nighttime soap operas of the 80s, okay? Like the hoopla. No, no, no. Da now, why are you laughing at me, Dax? And then invite me on, get some nighttime, get uh, Joan Collins up in there, get Victoria Principal up in there. Do you want people to continue to listen to our podcast, Jason? <laughs> Joining us for his final performance is Dax Holt, everybody. <laughs> I'm bringing you on to talk Disney, Jason. You can come on to talk Disney Now you're talking. Day. Now you're talking. <laughs> Soap operas, I'm out, bro. There you go. I love you. Bye, <laughs> Bye buddy. Give it up for Dax Holt. Bye. Hollywood Raw. Subscribe wherever you get. Uh-huh. Dax and I do have a joking rival because he is obviously in California. He loves yeah. Disneyland. I love Disney World. Hello, Orlando. And we battle. There's a fancy club called Club 33. Ooh. Ooh. And you have to be invited into the club. And it's kind of a race. Oh. It, yeah, it's very fancy. I don't like uh, that. But Dax and I joke, like, who's going to get in first? Yeah. And I'm just so afraid he's going to get in first. So, Leo, <laughs> Leo, take camera five. Hi, Orlando. If there's anybody that can get me in that club, I'll sell a relative. I'll... I'll don't you sell me. I won't sell Kendall, but... You thought about it, but don't I'll do sell it. Aaron. I'll sell Aaron. There we go, yeah. Sorry. She's good. She'll be good, yeah. She'll be fine. <laughs> More hot dish now. Any update uh, to... Uh, I should say an update to a story we had on Wednesday that got our executive producer all mad for nothing. <laughs> Remember when Whoopi Goldberg, we showed this yesterday, scolded an audience member at The View for recording the show while it was going on in his phone? Well, at first you might think, wow, Whoopi was...
kind of rude and shaming him on TV. There's more to the story. There usually is. So an audience member that was there that day told Entertainment Weekly that there was actually a physical confrontation. He says, like, that's what Whoopi was watching go down. He says a woman sitting in front of a man in the audience was annoyed because that dude had his camera out and was putting the camera over her head to record. Things apparently grew real tense between that group, the dude and the women. The audience member says a woman put her hands on the man to lower his camera and then he nudged her away. That that's when Whoopi stood up and got involved to put a stop to it. He says a crew member also approached the dude and told him not to pull out his phone again, which <laughs> now in this case, mm -hmm. Whoopi, ha Whoopi should do that. I mean, you know, if there's a... Physical issue. For instance, mm -hmm. like I'm looking at this row over, this section over here. If Hi. I saw row one start to fight with row two, oh, you I'm know, done. I would have to stop... I would have to stop the show, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. And have Aaron remove all of them, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, no, you know, I wouldn't if, know. They, if they got in a fight, I would just run the other way. I'd just be like, all right, well, y'all have fun, I'm gonna That's go. right, bye. <laughs> yeah. Next in the dish, the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills uh, certainly know how to leave their mark, quite literally. Guys, this is so gross. The season 13 reunion, we you know, just wrapped up earlier this month. We showed you some. And it wasn't just messy in front of the camera. The women ended up ruining the expensive white couches with all of their spray tans. <laughs> Look at that! Those are fresh. That is so vile. An associate production designer shared this video on the gram with the caption, what really happens when eight housewives are on two rental couches? They were rental couches. That is so, look, I have occasionally used spray tan, but I'm not sitting on white furniture for heaven's sake. Have you done this? Everybody who's ever gotten a spray tan has done this. Are you kidding me? I, I use self-tanner all winter long. I Do you sit on white shamed. couches? Uh, no, my mama told me never to buy a white couch. Because you were raised right. But I have, I did one time at Macy's, I really wanted these cream sheets because everybody on Instagram has these beautiful cream sheets. So I bought them and my side of the bed looks like somebody rolled up and died in it. <laughs> so much self-tanner, no matter how much I wash those Can sheets. Can I just say, let me just say this. Yes. We are very lucky that we have spouses that put up with That's all of us. So That's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> also, good news for Bravo, yeah. There's a fresh fan. Let me tell you, Colin is going right to heaven. I mean, there is, I mean, there's <laughs> no 694. He's going straight up. Anyway, here's some good news, though, for the, for the show. Season 13 of Beverly Hills brought in the highest viewership uh, of the entire Real Housewives franchise since 2014. It was a really, it was a good season. So, you know, people are, are writing the obituary on the Housewives, but some franchises are still, I think it was around 6 million viewers mm -hmm. when all was said and done. Pretty darn good for any show. That's better than some network shows mm -hmm. nowadays at prime time. Well, good thing they had spray tans and looked so good, you know. I, <laughs> I need. Pale. I speak. I need to do a one. I need because I'm. I looked in the mirror. I'm like, ooh, girl. I look like um, uncooked. Sh <laughs> I look like uncooked shrimp. I do. I need to. Yeah, I I'll, do. I'll give you my stuff. I'm fresh. I just did mine last. No, we night. have white chairs. We can't do that. We'll be right back. Back in a moment, everybody. <laughs> She won the Oscar of the food world. And she's my buddy coming up in just a little bit. Chef Ann Kim returns James Beard Award winner. Ann Kim returns to the Jason Show Kitchen and showing us another way she is spreading Korean cuisine around the world. I have a hole in my stomach. And even good directors make bad movies. A new list when we come back.
Since day one of our show, she's been one of our favorite guests uh, and known for her award-winning pizza. But her newest restaurant is not a pizzeria. Last uh, fall, my buddy Ann Kim transformed her, uh, transformed rather her uptown eatery in Minneapolis from Suki and Mimi's to Kim's. It's a you're going to find out. It's a very personal project. The Korean American menu reflects her heritage and food from her childhood. Give it up to the food Oscar winning and Kim everybody that's right James Beard award winner and I like to brag on my friend you also know her from you're a Netflix star now too you're a net yes you are embrace it friend okay I'm a star you're net <laughs> you're Netflix famous no is that oh but let me let me start there let me ask you because I watched that um Full Swing Show, the golf show that's a docu series oh, yes. on Netflix. I've seen it. Yeah. I've seen it. And now the golfers are famous not just because they play golf, but they're Netflix famous. Do you have people that come up to you not because they've eaten your pizza, but because they've seen you on Netflix? Yeah, a little bit of both. Like I was uh, on a flight to Mexico and I had someone come up and tap me on the shoulder and said, I love your pizza. And it's like, it. That is what makes me the most happiest when they come and eat the food and they really love what we're doing. I mean, celebrity. Yeah, but don't touch her. Uh, <laughs> be careful. Don't touch her. Yeah. Celebrity is fleeting, you know. Yes, but everybody's got to yes. eat. Yes. Yeah. Um, before we start cooking, my friend, uh, I know this. Uh, this particular restaurant, and when you and when you. Come to visit us in the Twin Cities. I always tell you where to go. Go, go to any Ann Kim restaurant, uh, any of them. You, you won't, uh, you won't be sorry. But tell the folks why this particular project is very personal to you. Um. Well, this restaurant is outside of my wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. Most people know me for pizza. Yeah. Um, but this particular restaurant, I feel, is the restaurant that I was meant to open. Mm -hmm. But I was too I afraid too. to do it. So those of you that may or may not know, I'm a Korean immigrant and came to this country when I was five years old. And back in the 70s, Korean food was just not something that people knew of in the community. And even now, I think a lot of people are unfamiliar with it. But back then, it was the this kind of food brought me a lot of shame and now many years later I'm producing food that is now a source of great pride and I want to represent what this food not only means to me but I want people here to understand what Korean food can be but not just Korean food yeah this is Korean American food yeah. because I'm Korean by birth, but I'm also American by growing up here. So I embrace both those sides and I'm really excited for people to come and try it. And you just saw the video you saw was the grand opening. It's a beaut all of Anne's restaurants are beautiful. I'm going to stop bragging on you for just a minute. So oh. what are we making, my friend? So we're making something here that maybe a lot of people may or may not be familiar with. And it's Korean barbecue. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and uh, this is a little different from traditional American barbecue in that uh, it is, ooh, oh. listen to that. That grill's working, Ann. Yes, so this particular cut is called L.A. Carby style. And so it's believed that a Korean immigrants that moved to the United States developed this cut. It's a short beef short rib, but it's cut flanken style, so it's nice and thin. And so it cooks really quickly. Can you smell that, audience? I can smell, yeah. Uh, it smells so good. So it's marinated in a soy, ginger, Korean pear marinade, a little sweet, a little savory. Yeah, I know you're all hungry. And and we sear it and grill it until it gets nice and caramelized. And then we're going to put it on a sizzle plate. Normally at the restaurant, the sizzle plate would be steaming hot. hot. And then we'll Thus put the name of the sizzle plate, yeah. Anne. That's right, sizzle. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and we'll put some a bed of onions underneath. And then we'll also put some uh, sh uh, charred shishito peppers, which are most... I love those. Yes. They're mostly not hot, but mm -mm. one out of ten gets a little bit hot. So, you know, you're playing Did a little Russian roulette. How much, because this is out of your... And nothing... I mean, you're so good. Nothing things out of your comfort zone, but how much fun was it putting this menu together? You know, it was a ton of fun, yeah. and I feel like 
this particular menu came to me so much easier than anything else. Really? Yeah. yeah. Because it's the food that I know. Mm. And, you know, I experimented and dabbled a little bit about with Korean food when I opened Pizzeria Lola. I decided I'm going to see what Korean barbecue tastes like on a pizza or what kimchi tastes like on a pizza. And so that was just sort of a gateway to introduce the good people of Minnesota to what Korean food could be because what's safer than pizza, right? I Everybody mean, loves pizza. It's a good gateway yes. to different cuisines. It yes. is. You're right. That's why she's on Netflix, everybody. <laughs> Ooh, look at that. What, what, why can I not think of the, the series that you were, um... Chef's Table. Chef's Table. Yes. Chef's Table. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Look at that. So at the restaurant, we actually use a char grill. So you'll get, it's smoky and nice and grilled, but because you didn't get me a char broiler. I'm sorry. Or... That's, that's coming, that's coming with our new set in season <laughs> 10. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, so it's going to get nice and seared. I'm going to actually throw the onions on here, too, okay. and get those going. I'm oh. going to stick some of the shishito peppers on here. I, oh. I'm looking at I, uh, I just, I'm so hungry. Row one, I know. I've said this, there was a couple days ago, and that I've never felt like the audience was going to throttle me, but I do think <laughs> they may charge us at some point. Uh, yeah. Yeah, hold, yeah. stay back, stay we're back. Gonna, we're going to finish this up on the other side of the break, back after this. More with Ann Kim. My goodness. That smells so good. Back in the kitchen. And Netflix superstar and Kim. Okay, we're done. <laughs> Ann and I were just marveling of how good this is turning out. Uh, you know, TV kitchens are not what people are used to, what, the sh what chefs are used to. This is coming out pretty good, Ann. Yeah, if this, uh, if this uh, product wants to sponsor me, I'm available. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, and so are we, people. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Anyway, okay, now why do you, now you're scaring me. Okay. Now why do you have, uh, uh, BB came over to give notes and you, you held up the scissors. I'm now what are you doing? I'm not going to give you a haircut, but I just wanted to show you how traditional Korean barbecue is normally sliced. And I don't know why the rest of the world has not caught on, but we use scissors to slice our meat. And it's so efficient and the Koreans know what's going on. You don't have to dirty up a plate or anything. So we use these scissors. Those so are I giant just, scissors, Anne. Uh, yes, they are. <laughs> <laughs> and then look at how beautiful this is. And imagine if we were in the restaurant, this cast iron would be sizzling. Sizzle plate. And then we'd place these beautiful short ribs oh. on to our plate like so. And then it's going to be taken to your dining room. Uh, and this is an app? This is because no, this would be a meal. Oh, okay. This is a meal. Okay, I was yeah. I didn't know I <laughs> I mean, I don't know. It could you know, choose your How own How dare I? It no, could, I didn't know, Ann. I it could be know. an app. It, it could, could be, be an yeah. app for that those of you with hearty appetites. Yeah, that's yes. a meal right there. Yes, for okay. husky people. Yeah. Uh, we have, we have, uh, did you, nobody uses husky, <laughs> that's a term, that's a term from our childhood, the Sears I husky know. section. I I was a chubby kid and I Me had to too. wear husky. Ann, Ann and I are, are basically the same age. Remember the Sears husky oh, section? Yes, yes. yes. You there. were so embarrassed to walk over there. Husky pants, yes. Speaking, look at this, Leo, oh, can we yeah. get a shot? Now look at little, look, look at Ann as yes. a child there, look at, look at that. Look at child and look at Ann now. Yeah. Hey, and now this is how it started, and this is how it is now. Yeah, there we go. What's uh, mm. Mm. what's this, my friend? All right, so <laughs> I'm really sorry, I couldn't resist. So not only do we have a lovely Korean barbecue section, but we have these really traditional dishes that I want to talk about. Okay. The hey, can I while you do that? Can I eat one of these? Yeah, of okay, course. Go ahead. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. hot. I don't care. So this first dish here I brought because it's near and dear to my heart. It's called pindetok, and this is a dish that it's my mother's recipe. It's a traditional North Korean dish. My mother was born in North Korea, and it's the first dish that I actually brought to a potluck when I was growing up, and everyone loved it and devoured it. There's mung beans, there's fermented kimchi that we make in-house, and it's gluten-free. And then we also have a shrimp and vegetable pancake here, oh. which is also delicious. And then this is the psalm accompaniment that 
goes with our barbecue. So in Korea, you would traditionally put a little bit of samjang, a little bit of that on here, a little bit of the uh, scallion herb salad, and a little bit of meat, and wrap it up and eat it like a Korean taco. Um, so this is also part of the barbecue. And over here is on every Korean table, so anywhere from like three to 100 different things called banchan, which are side dishes, different marinated vegetables, fermented kimchi. Here I have a dongchimi, which is a white radish kimchi and a traditional napa kimchi, and always a side of rice. Yeah. Um, because in Korea, when someone asks you how you're doing, they ask you pop mugunna, which means have you eaten rice, which means have you had food, which is a term of endearment. And so oh. there's always rice on the table. I know. I love right? that. But, 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 that's why you and I had to go to the husky <laughs> section. I mean, that's why we had to go to the Sears, because we were eating so much of that. I had two or three bowls of rice, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, let's go through everything, because again, when, when you all watching in Orlando and Chicago, when you guys come to see us, mm -hmm. let me see if I can list all your restaurants. You ready? Okay, go. Okay. Pizzeria Lola, mm -hmm. my favorite, Young Joni. Hello, pizza. Mm -hmm. there we go. Uh, Kim's. Yep. And then, are you still doing by the yes, Vikings? Yes, I um, uh, consulted on the menu at Kindred Hearth at the Omni Hotel, should you want to stay at a hotel nearby. Vikings headquarters right over there. Oh, and I do want to mention, yeah, mention that the... this past weekend, we opened for lunch on weekends at Kim's. So you can come visit us during the lunch hour or Love dinner. Yep. And then you can watch her episode of Chef's Table, right? Chef's, yes, Table. Chef's, Chef's Table. Table on Netflix. Give it up for Ann Kim, everybody. We're going to take a break. A funny list when we return. Back in a moment. Stay with us. Thank you. Thank you love. I love coming on your show. I love having you, love. Fun. We have a good time, don't we? Welcome back. If there's one thing the writers at Rolling Stone love, it's a controversial list to get all of us talking. And their latest one is no different. We do love this one. It's the 50 terrible movies by great directors. They're, they're the, quote, cinematic disasters Hollywood's greatest geniuses would love to forget. No matter how good you are in any profession, mm -hmm. you're going to make a, you know, you're going to do a bad one every so often. Okay, so let's get right to it. Starting with number 19 on the list, and the reason why this entire ranking caught our attention. Director Robert Zemeckis has made some really memorable films uh, with Back to the Future, Forrest Gump, Castaway. Uh, but there's one movie from 1992 that had, and this is putting it mildly, a mixed reception. And there seems to be something wrong with your uh, blouse. Yeah, and you're still alive. That's another miracle! Oh, no, it isn't. Now, this is Death Becomes Her with Meryl Streep, Goldie Hawn, uh, the, uh, Bruce Willis, as two women who drink a magic potion that promises eternal youth. The film has a, has a cult following, especially with my people, the gays. Uh, yeah, there's also a broad... Oh, audience, trust me, the gays... <laughs> We, we watch this on repeat in the waiting room at headquarters. It's just on a loop. In Golden Valley. <laughs> There's a Broadway musical version of Death Becomes Her. <laughs> Again, orchestrated by the gays. We're just telling you. Yeah. People wonder about the gay agenda. This is the gay agenda. That's what it is, yeah. More Goldie Hawn and More Meryl Streep. More Goldie yeah. <laughs> Jumping ahead, to, uh, let's go to number seven now. And we're focusing on the great George Lucas. Okay, Star Wars fans waited 16 years between the end of the original trilogy and the start of the prequel trilogy. And in 1999, even though people like it now, this didn't quite live up to expectations. Now, like I said, since it was released in 99, 
Star Wars Episode One of the Phantom Menace has been reassessed with many now defending the prequels. I'm one of them, <laughs> but I remember seeing it at the General Cinema at Mall of America in 99 thinking, ooh, Ooh, Molly, we have a, oh, Molly, we in danger. Yeah, uh, yeah. Now, next, Steven Spielberg isn't perfect. Specifically, he wasn't perfect in 2008 when he resurrected an iconic franchise from the 80s. Rolling Stone placed Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull at number three on the list. Now, here's the deal. I love Indy, and I love, I love Lucas, I love Spielberg. But I would agree with this one. Out of all the Indiana Jones, I actually prefer the one that just came out, The Dial of Destiny, more than this one. <laughs> I think the underrated one is Temple of Doom, but that's a whole other, that's not this list. But I did, liked this movie. Did you like Kingdom of the I Crystal did. Skull? Yeah. This is my generation. This is your generation, right? yeah. Like, you know, Shia LaBeouf was big then, and, yeah. you know, it makes sense. Let's move on to number two on the list, and it goes to a movie called North. Anybody remember it? Nope. It's, oh, one person, thank you. <laughs> Give that woman a rib. Uh, yeah, this one is by director Rob Reiner with Elijah Wood, Little, he was a kid then, from 1994. It's about a young boy traveling across the country to meet prospective parents. Film critic Roger Ebert wrote, quote, I hated this movie, hated, 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 hated this movie, yeah. <laughs> Wow, that's I, what I hate. I was working at a movie theater when this came out. Yeah. And I used to have, when you put the movies together, you had to watch it mm -hmm. to make sure it wasn't upside it down. Mm -hmm. I fell asleep. It was so bad. I remember <laughs> thought it was such a horrible movie. You hated, 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 I hated, 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 okay. hated it. Yeah. Got it. Finally, finally, <laughs> yeah, don't watch it. <laughs> Even Francis Ford Coppola has a bad uh, movie. He had a run of iconic movies in the 70s, but things took a turn in the 80s and 90s, including a coming-of-age film starring Robin Williams. Do you mean the way he said it? Boys, do not clean up. Let us clean it up a little bit. Yeah, right. He is. I bet you. Watch. This is a clip from Jack. This is the movie Jack about a child whose boy uh, grows up at four times the normal rate. Jack is ranked one of the worst film by a great director, according <laughs> to Rolling Stone. It's number one. Okay, I t my, my husband loves this movie. So when we were going through this list, I texted him and I was like, did you know that this is on like this worst of list? It's, it's number, number one. one. And he goes, they're wrong. This movie is misunderstood. Is it? I, it's a really good story. I was like, uh, okay. I I've seen it once yeah. and I remember not really enjoying it. Yeah, I don't, yeah. Well, I mean, you don't say Robin Williams is a fifth grader. It makes no sense. No. But I mean, if Period. anyone could have pulled it off, it would have been him. You can see the full list on rollingstone.com. We're going to take a break. We'll be back after this. Back in a moment. Have, do you like it? No. No, I hate it. You know what, uh, there's a movie that no, no one likes or no one really uh, cares about that I love, and it's called One Fine Day. Never I love that movie, right, Aaron? It's with George Clooney and Michelle Pfeiffer oh. about a fall day in New York, and it's really cute. And oh. it, I watch it in the fall because nothing's better in the fall than a New York movie set in fall. And it's like good. It When Harry Met Sally. Like When Harry mm -hmm. Met Sally, yeah. Mm -hmm. Time to meet uh, our next JVIP of the week today. It's Maddie from Alexandria, Minnesota. Maddie says uh, she loves uh, being in our audience and even had a four-second shot of herself. Oh, we, we managed Way to put to you go, on TV. Maddie. Yeah. Way to go. I'm glad, I'm glad photographer Eric got a, got a shot of you when you were here, yeah. <laughs> now she tells everyone that she's famous and forces family and friends to watch the clip on YouTube <laughs> over and over and over. Yeah, as you should. She loves our crew, Aaron, Kendall, Stephanie, the whole gang. Maddie gets a Jason Show mug and an enter to win the monthly grand prize. That includes being a VIP guest in our audience, a $150 gift card to Becker Furniture, and a $250 gift certificate to Renew Med Spa. Right? We'll be right back. Stay with us. I did just have you do it, buddy my buddy right there. Oh, 
I'm really excited. I'll, I'll, I'll show you pictures tomorrow, tonight, and it's traveling all across the country. It'll come to your city, but another uh, tour of the Lion King uh, Broadway, from Bro yeah. Off Broadway uh, is going around the country, and it debuts here. Mm -hmm. And my mother, my mother has never seen it; has mm -hmm. only been to one Broadway show in her life. Right. So we're going tonight, and I'm so excited. So we'll show you tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. Tomorrow, a new fast food item to try. Colin and I got a taste of the brand new taco pizza from Taco John's, plus wine diva Leslie Miller with some perfect pairings for spring. But right now, that's going to do it for us. If you're watching and you're a kid that's being bullied, go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good day. We'll see you tomorrow.